Leon Ogin here, or Leon if you prefer, and welcome to Lesson 7 of Medieval to Modern, as we go through music history, the, the history of Western music. Now we're still in the medieval period as we continue our journey through the history of Western music, and this period roughly spans the years 500 to 1400. The period from approximately 1170 to 1310 is commonly known as the Ars Antiqua, or the Old Art. In this era, we see more development in polyphony. And polyphony, as you remember, is where you have more than one note going at a time instead of monophony or monophonic music. The geographical center of music was Paris. And interestingly, we see the emergence now of the first truly famous composers. Up till now, we've been studying Gregorian chant and so on, and we don't know who wrote many of these chants, but now we have knowledge of some of these composers. So polyphony developed in the church and outside the church. And as we learned when we studied organum, sometime during the ninth century, musicians in the church began experimenting with the idea of singing two melodic lines simultaneously at parallel intervals, usually at the fourth, fifth, or the octave. It evolved over the years, and by the 11th century, so you had the original chant melody, and that was sung very slowly on long-held notes. That was called the tenor. It comes from the Latin tenere, meaning to hold. And the added melodies wove about and embellished the resulting drone underneath. And so this music thrived at the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris during the 12th and 13th centuries. And much later, of course, it became known as the Ars Antiqua, or the Old Art. So, there were two composers at Notre Dame, especially known for composing in this style. One of them was named Leonin, and uh, somewhere around 1163 to 1190, he composed Organum, or Organa, for two voices. And then he had a, a successor named Perotin, and his organa included three and even four voices. So let's talk about Leonin. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly because we don't know how it was pronounced and we don't know very much about his life. But he did flourish during the 12th century and he was the leading liturgical composer of his generation. And as I mentioned, he was associated with the Notre Dame or Parisian school of composition. He's credited with creating what's known as the Magnus Liber Organi, or the Great Book or or the Great Book, <laughs> I can't even say it, the Great Book of Organum, a collection of two-voiced organum settings meant to be sung in church throughout the year. And so now you're hearing some examples of his music in the background. His successor was named Perotin, or Latin Perotinus, or Perotinus. He was a French composer of sacred polyphonic music, and most musicians believe, or most musical historians believe, that he started to write polyphony in four parts. He introduced four-part writing. Once again, we don't know anything about his life, but he probably worked at the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, and his compositions are considered to belong to that same school of composition that he and Leonin are the only known members, or at least the only members known by name. So his four-part works were revolutionary, Peritons, because religious music in the 12th century was almost entirely in the form of two-part organum. And that's where you have the plain chant melody sung against another line of music. But in Peritons' organa, organa, by the way, that's the, par that's the plural of organum, <laughs> The, litur the liturgical chant is heard against not one voice, but two or three voices that provide highly decorative vocalizations. And so now you're hearing his music in the background. And granted, this music can indeed sound quite strange to our ears, but I think if you give it a chance, it's going to grow on you. Now, the music of Arsantiqua was slowly replaced by 
the smoother contours of polyphonic music in the fourth century, and that became known as Ars Nova, the new art. And that will be the subject for our next video. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to like and comment on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you in the next one.